a little humid out there today. But the smoke has cleared up. That's good. It rained all night. And that probably helped. I'm all dressed in my Sunday best again. Gonna unload right away just around the corner here. I just have like those three big rolls of piping. Uh, drainage tile maybe? Is this drainage tile? The bigger ones too? I have to excuse my ignorance. I'm not familiar with all of the farming equipment that sometimes goes on my trailer and exactly what it's used for. I know how to tie it down and secure it, and I know how to bring it to where it needs to be. But I don't always know what it is or what it's for. <laughs> big pipe and big rolls of pipe. I think, well, drainage pipe, right? I know it's for that. It's for drainage. I hauled a whole bunch of this stuff last year, and I learned that it was for drainage tile underneath fields. And that's when I learned what drainage tile was. Common for farmers to put that underneath their field to help the water and moisture in springtime drain away so they can seed it and grow food that I can eat. I love food. Therefore, I love farmers. So anyway, uh, I'm going to unload this right now, and then I'm going to take this empty trailer. I'm just going to switch it out at our yard and uh, grab a different one. The shop's got to take a look at this one. And then go to Kenora. I don't know why I had to think about that for a second. Where am I going again? Kenora, Ontario, which is east of where, uh, where I'm from, Winnipeg area, Steinbeck. And then we're going down to Minnesota. That will deliver tomorrow. And from there, I'll be getting home. Old Blue's got a date. It's getting polished up. It's going to be great. So next week should be all shiny. And then after that, he's got another date. Popular guy. Popular. He's got another date. He's uh, going in for a annual safety sure that it's safe to drive. It is by law I have to get this truck safety once a year. Yeah, it can get pretty expensive. Let's hope it doesn't. <laughs> we'll see. Get it safety. And uh, then, well, what else happens? Diesel has his appointment next week as well. Which uh, is a little bit more intense than any other appointment he's had before. That's why he had the EKG last week. Because he's going to be put under some heavy anesthetic. He's got to get his mouth cleaned and maybe some teeth pulled. So they're going to knock him out all day, and they had to make sure that his heart could handle it first. So I haven't heard back, but with doctors and stuff, usually good news, no news is good news, usually. So we'll see how that goes. What else is going on next week? There's a few other things yet. We'll worry about that next week. Let's worry about today. Tomorrow can worry about itself. trailer well wow. look who showed up right beside me you guys remember Caden doing some city work that's actually my old truck I used to drive that truck what's he got behind him can't see oh he's got some got a load on there so we're just at the uh, Tim Hortons in uh, on the east side of Winnipeg Deacon's Corner that's the word I'm looking for Caden! How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, just got to stop for some Tim's. Nice, nice, I just got that as well. Right on, you guys all remember Caden, right? Yeah. It's been like over a year since you've been in the video? A year, yeah. Yeah? I'll try to look at the lens this time. Yeah. It's always hard <laughs> to look at the lens. I'll look at you guys. Yeah. But yeah. See good you seeing you. Yeah, it's good seeing you. And uh, we'll see you guys in another vlog. Enjoy. <laughs> One day, maybe he'll be driving his own W9. Maybe. One maybe. Day. Or a Pete 370. I like Peterbilt too. Peterbilt's are nice. Yeah. Just not a Volvo. No. <laughs> Don't own one. <laughs> if you're a company driver, it's all right. Yeah, they have a reputation. <laughs> but okay, well, you have a safe one. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, Caden's a great guy. Good friend of mine. Ah, we missed the green light. So I gotta book it to Kenora. I've gotta get there ASAP. Pronto. Stat. Gotta get there before they stop loading for the day. And about 2 hours and 15 minutes to get there, and it takes about 2 hours to get there. Look at this guy. Nice. At least he tied his stuff down. 
seen it more than once, guys pulling these little utility trailers and stuff and they don't tie it down. See, this is tied down too, right? Sort of. Well, it's strapped to the front, that'll work. Not tied down. Nice, the chain down there. Looking good, looking good. I find myself looking at other people's loads all the time now. Not to be judgy or anything, but sometimes I learn stuff from them, you know? I learn, I see things done in ways that work really well, but are easier than the way I do it. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do it like that next time. And sometimes I see things done in ways that I would never do it, but that's the thing, it's your load. When you have a load behind you, that's your load. It's your responsibility, you tie it down. Make sure it's done good. There's more than one way to tie down a load, usually. But there is, it is possible to do it incorrectly. <laughs> All right, let's go. This is the Trans Canada we're getting onto here. Our one road. On this road for 204 kilometers.
right, we made it just in time. Construction in Ontario, in Ontario between Kenora and the Manitoba border slowed me down a lot more than I thought it would. They're twinning it all the way through, right? And that's very rugged terrain, as you saw, to that blasted away to build a, a four lane through there, right? Costs a lot of money, takes a lot of time, but I've been asking for it for as long as I knew what it was. And it's probably not because of my videos, but maybe, maybe they're watching my videos and they're like, yeah, you know what? Maybe this trucker Josh guy is right. Maybe we do need to twin the highway. Maybe, yeah, it'd be good if less people would die. I think that's a good thing. What do you think? Well, yeah, then they gotta go through this whole government process, all the bureaucracy. Finally, they convince all the right people that, yeah, people dying on the two lane is a bad thing. Yeah, everybody vote in favor. Yay, death is bad. Trying to get anything through there, it's just like hurting cats. Trying to get them all to agree on one thing, you know? Finally, we got them to build the four lane to Kenora. Now we need to keep the pressure on because we're, we're asking for something big next. We're asking them to twin the highway all the way from Kenora now, all the way to Ottawa and all the way to Toronto. Twin highway, the entire way because we want people to stop dying on the highway. How about that? That'll be a big one for them to get through. Man, that'll be worse than hurting cats. Uh, I'll be like, what's worse than hurting cats? It'll be that. I'm trying to get them to agree to do something that will help and improve public safety, but costs, you know, lots of money. And you know, we, we, we don't have all that money, even though everyone knows we do. We just don't want to spend it on you. We want to spend it over there on something that has nothing to do with you. We want to send all our money over there. Let them use our money. We don't want to spend money on actual Canadian citizens now. No, that wouldn't be good, no. Or we could spend a whole bunch of... <laughs> I could get into a bigger rant here. I'll just cut it off right there <laughs> before I get carried away, before I get carried away. Uh, what a circus, right? What a circus. Uh, uncommon sense is what I call it. When something just makes sense, it's uncommon sense. So I'm waiting here to get loaded. There are very good people here. Uh, there's a long lineup at the tarping station. I'm looking at it over there. So two trucks can be in the tarping station at the same time. They got to tarp their loads. And they're supposed to move up and out of the tarping station once they have it over, they're supposed to tack it down on all four corners, move out of the tarping station so the people behind them can come in and get started on their tarps. That way you got four guys tarping their loads, right? And then once those two guys out front are finished, they move out of the way, and then the guys in the tarping shed there that have their tarps over move forward and finish tarping outside in front of the building so that the next people can get in, right? That doesn't always happen here. People like think that they need to tie their whole load down, visit for half an hour, have lunch, then tarp their load and have second lunch and you know visit for a while again maybe have a nap you know it's long days long days you need a nap and then you know finish tarping eventually and then sit in there looking at your tarps for a while meanwhile you got three guys behind you waiting to get into the tarp station okay i'm exaggerating just a little bit but no not too much you guys you know you're laughing along with me right now you're like yep we all know those guys but uh, that is what it is. Hopefully they're all quick. Usually, usually most guys, most guys, 90% of, 99% of guys are get in there, get tarped, and they're gone. It's just that few select people who are oblivious to the fact that others are waiting for them. Or maybe they just don't care. They realize that they just don't care. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how other people's brains work. I can only tell you how mine works. And my brain would not let me do that. I cannot... I, I get... I get anxious when I'm in someone's way. If I see someone waiting for me, I will do everything I can to be as quick as possible and get out of their way as soon as I can. That's just how I work. I think that's normal. Am I weird? Maybe I am weird because I got some of that uncommon sense. I am a weird guy. I guess that would put me in the minor. What do you think? I don't know. I'm just rambling on here, bibble babbling. There's one truck ahead of me yet that they gotta load and then they're gonna load me. And then, how many guys do I see in line there? One, two, 
Okay, so there's three guys in front of me in line, plus these, so four. So probably four guys will have to tarp their loads before I can get in there, so I'll be waiting a little bit here. But as long as I get loaded, that's all that matters. I'm gonna tarp it and get going after that. And the reason I bring up things like this and complain a little bit, yes, I acknowledge I complain. I, I do, some people like to leave comments for me as if I don't know that I'm complaining. All you do is complain, Trucker Josh! And I'm like sitting here like, I know, I made the video. I know, right? All I do is complain. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about things that we all agree on. It's supposed to be relatable. Most of you are sitting there shaking your head laughing along with me. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly how frustrating it is. But it's the people who don't get it who get offended. They're the guys holding everything up. Because they're like, how dare you tell me that I'm in the way? Oh, you're such an awful person, right? And the rest of us are like, yeah, you are. Get out of the way. Move. Right? So we're all laughing along together. That's that's why I complain about things on, uh, on the vlog. It's something to talk about. It's something for us to all relate over. And it's also, also for new drivers who are honestly, honestly just ignorant. And that's not a bad thing. I don't mean that as an insult when I say that. They, they just don't know. They don't know the etiquette on the road. They've never been taught. Maybe I grew up in a family of truckers, so I know the etiquette of being on the road. Some people may honestly, honestly just not know. And we shouldn't be too hard on them and make fun of them for that, but we should gently guide them and teach them that, hey, that's not the way th we do things. Hey, there's, there's, there's a better way of doing things. We're like, hey, you're in the way. This is how it should be done, you know? That way you're not holding people up. It's not nice to hold people up. You know, you shouldn't park in the fuel islands for your half hour break. That's common sense. That's becoming uncommon sense sometimes, but man, some people may just, it seems like maybe they just were never told. They're, they thought, oh, well, I didn't think it'd be a problem parking here for a half hour. It, it is a problem. It is a problem. You shouldn't do that. It's very rude. It's bad etiquette. And it's just something you shouldn't do. Go find a parking spot. Take your half hour break in a parking spot, right? So that's, that's why I bring these things up on my videos to get us all on the same page. Make things a little bit better for all of us. You know? Relate to the majority of people who can laugh along with me and chuckle along with me and maybe gently share with new guys the, the proper etiquette and the way things should be done. And so we all work together, we're a team. We're all doing the same thing out here. We all wanna look out for each other and we all wanna make, we, all, we don't wanna make life more difficult for other drivers. How's that? Was that clear, clear enough, well put, maybe? Oh, leave me a comment down below. Let's see what you guys think about everything I've said. Am I, am I right? We want to teach people, right? Some people just don't know. Right up 
here off to the left there's a, a float plane port. A lot of Americans come here and they park their vehicles up here on the left and then they take float planes up north to do fly-in fishing to lakes that you can only get to by float plane. Now that's some real fishing. Right here on the left. A lot of American plates. I see Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, a couple of other states, Minnesota, I think I saw there, obviously they're right next door. I'm still in Canada. I'm at the inspection station, which is empty right now. That's why I'm here. I'm the only one here. Just taking a little break, making sure all my paperwork is in order and that my load has been cleared for customs before I show up there with this. I haven't shown you my tarp job yet, have I? Let me show you. Wrapped like a nice little present. These loads are always uh, a little heavier on the trailer than they are on the drives, just the way they load them and I guess the way it works. And these axles here, I can't slide them. They're fixed in place. So I'm still legal. I'm at about 33,600 pounds on my trailer here. I'm allowed to have 34,000 in the US. And 34,000 is my maximum on my drives, the two axles behind my truck up there as well. And I'm sitting at about 32,000 up there, 32,500. 32, so I got about a thousand more pounds on my trailer than I do on my truck, which makes for a very bumpy ride. Because the truck goes over these bumps and then the trailer hits it and it just donkey kicks you. Just, <clears throat> but it's not that bad. It's, it could be worse. But it's just a thousand pounds. I can just I can just tell right away is that the the weight isn't distributed the way I would like it to be. But what's nice about hauling this lumber, other than other than the fact, well, I had to tarp it. That's not the nicest part, but that's okay. What's nice about this lumber though is that I don't have to slide my fifth wheel. I'm not too heavy up on the front. It's usually only when I have a flatbed and then if they load the freight a little too far forward. Because I've, I've shared it in like past vlogs before that I usually have my fifth wheel pretty far to the back, like two thirds of the way to the back of where it can be on its track. And that shifts weight along the frame off my steers or onto my drives. And sometimes I have to close that gap to get more weight onto my steers. Since I have such a, a long hood, sometimes it's it's hard to get the weight from the back of my frame all the way to the front of the frame to put more weight on my steers to distribute the weight better. They, they, they want us to keep within certain regulations, certain weights per axle. Otherwise we just destroy all the roads all the time and then we complain about how the roads are terrible and then, then they have to fix them and then it's five years of construction and they only last for six months. That's a story for another time. But, yeah, so that's the way that works. And I can't have my fifth wheel all the way forward all the time because it depends on where the fifth wheel kingpin on the trailer is. If it's further forward on my trailer, on the trailer with less of an overhang, like, you know, like the little pin that hooks into my truck, if there's a, a big overhang like on a van trailer or, a, or even a reefer, I can't have my fifth wheel so close to my cab because then the trailer will hit my cab and hit my headache rack when I turn, right? But my, my, uh, flatbeds that I haul, the kingpins are pretty close to the front, so I can bring it closer up to the front, putting more weight onto my steers. It's a balancing act being a truck driver. You thought it was easy just holding the steering wheel all day. Well, you could probably get away with, with it for a while just holding the steering wheel, but eventually you're going to get nailed for something because there's a whole lot more to trucking than just holding the steering wheel. There's a lot of math involved. A lot of balancing weights. A lot of moving weight around on your frame, on your trailer, making sure that everything is legal and all the regulations they have. Then our hours of service, that's a whole nother can of worms. There's a lot that goes into this job. It's not 
that easy. We may make it look easy, you may think it's easy, but I'm here to show you and to tell you that it's not always easy, but it's fun. I enjoy it a lot. Let's go to the US. Let's go, oh wait, let's just double check, make sure my load is cleared. We do not want to show up to customs when they're not expecting us. They really don't like that. Really, really don't like that. And then everything is all in a big kerfluffle. So let's, uh, I have an app here. All the paperwork is at the broker already. Just gotta find my app. Shipment tracker, there it is. And then I just scan this little barcode. That's on my paperwork. And it'll tell me, uh, scan barcodes, tell me if it's clear or not. Okay, so I'm gonna search it. Like, there's an app for everything. Technology nowadays, you know, we say that things keep getting worse. In some ways, things are getting worse. Common sense is just going out the window. Sanity is going out the window in many cases, but there are so many cool technological advances that have made life so much easier and so much better. And we can get so much more done in less time. Let's see this. Uh, yes, they have it. I am in yeah, Port of Entry, International Falls. Custom certified, nice. They are ready for me. You hear that? America's ready for me. Hmm, huh. can you handle me? Ha! Ah! Here I come, America. Eight kilometers. I'm not even on the road yet. Let's get ourselves out of this little inspection station. Anybody coming? Anybody coming? Stop, look both ways. Yeah, there's somebody coming. I'll need the whole road. There's somebody coming from the right and I'm turning right. Then I need the whole road, so I gotta wait for him or her or it. There you go. Have a good day. You're welcome for waiting. I could have cut you off. I chose not to. Out of the goodness and kindness of my soul, a little surprised at how chilly it is outside. What is the actual temperature outside? Inside. Seven degrees Celsius? Wow, that's in the 40s, right? Man. Good thing my uh, bunk heater's still working. It's my engine heater that's not working. 
I'm gonna have that looked at next week, I think, when the truck goes in for a safety. I want that working. I don't wanna to wait too long and forget about it or something. Okay, so now it's time to get all my stuff moved off the bed, get everything out of the way so that I can go to bed. I'm so tired. It's been a long day again. It's been a 14 hour day since I started. So this next week, I know I've been talking about it a lot, but Old Blue's going in for a polish. She's gonna look so nice. <laughs> it's gonna look so good. I can't wait. So the same guy who polished the truck last year at this time when I bought it is doing it again for me. Uh, and then from there on throughout the year, I can use my Bullsnot products to keep that shine at a max. I can't wait to share some of that product with you as well. Speaking of, if you've made it to the end of the vlog, you're very, very special. And you're very lucky because I want you guys to know that there's gonna be a couple of giveaways coming up real soon on my channel. Uh, I have some great products from Howes that I wanna share with you. And also some great products from Bullsnot. You know the whole Bullsnot lineup, right? I've got Howes mugs. I've got Howes t-shirts, Howes sweatshirts. They sent me this little care package and I wanna get these things into your hands. So between Howes and uh, Bullsnot, we're gonna be doing a couple of giveaways in the coming weeks. I think we're gonna do one per week throughout the summer. So I'm gonna think of a creative way. I want it to be some kind of like competition or some kind of riddle or something that you gotta beat or solve. And then uh, the first one to answer it correctly or the first one to respond uh, will get some free stuff. No matter where you are in the world, I'm gonna send it to you. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun. So this is, this is something that I'm planning to do very soon in the next couple of days. Don't worry, we're gonna make these competitions as fair as possible. So I will announce well ahead of time when these competitions are gonna happen and what they're gonna be so that you're prepared and you have just as good of a chance as everyone else at winning. And we'll do them at different times of the day so that no matter where you are around the world, uh, you'll be able to compete in some of these competitions or riddles uh, in, during the day. Because I know that if I do them during the day here, my friends and brothers and sisters in Australia, they're going to be sleeping. So that's not really fair. Uh, forcing them to stay up to win a t-shirt. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. If you have any ideas of some fun games to play, let me know in the comments section. Maybe we can make this a big community thing where we all get together and have a little bit of fun and win some prizes. All right, I'm excited to start on that next uh, in the next com couple of days. Time, my tongue is my tongue is my tongue is tied. That means it's time to go to bed. We'll talk more about this in the morning. Thanks for watching today. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know some fun games or competitions you think that we could play here on the channel uh, for to win some prizes from Howes and from Bullsnot. And other than that, I'm signing out. You take care. You have a good day.